Hello everyone. I am Amit Kumar, assistant professor in the Department of Social Work, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. I welcome you all in this lecture series of psychology. The topic of today's presentation is human growth and development. So, moving towards the introduction. Psychology is not a very old concept and its origin started with industrial revolution and it got scientific status only after 1870 when William Wundt established the first laboratory in Leipzig, Germany and it got legal status only after 1950 when Rudolf Goekle first used the word psychology. Psychology is basically the study of soul and mind and thus it can be concluded that psychology is the scientific study of behavior, experience and mental processes of the organism in relation to the environment. So coming towards the topic, growth, what do you mean by growth? This is the first question of our today's topic. Growth here refers to increase in height, weight and body mass index and it is quantitative in nature. You can measure it. Growth can be measured in terms of height in centimeter or meter, in weight in kilogram or gram or if you have both the things then you can get the body mass index which can be measured in terms of weight in kg by height in meter square. We should not get confused with the BMI with accumulation of fat. This is a common myth existing in the society. And the famous psychologist Harlock has defined growth as change in size, proportion, disappearance of old features and acquisition of new ones. Thus, growth refers to increase in physical size of whole or any part of it and can be measured. Now comes development. Another question of today's topic is what do you mean by development? So development is defined as the series of change which an organism undergoes in passing from embryonic stage to maturity. If I say in nutshell, it is whatever the changes a human being is achieving, accumulating from womb to tomb, I may not be wrong. So development is a continuous and gradual processes according to B.F. Skinner, the famous psychologist. In 1965, Crow and Crow has told growth as well as those changes in behavior which results from environmental situation. Growth refers to qualitative changes in the organism as a whole. Development is a continuous process through which physical, emotional and intellectual changes occurs and it is a more wider and comprehensive terms than growth and development can be possible without growth. So growth is taking place within the umbrella of development. Thus development is a process of change in growth and capability over time due to function of both maturation and interaction with the environment. Now coming to the differences between growth and development. As I have already told you, growth refers to physiological changes, increase in height, weight or enlargement of any part of our body can be termed as growth. Whereas development is a refers to overall changes and they are very systematic. Holistic development is taking place in the human being. Changes in the quantitative respect is termed as growth. As I have already told you, increase in height, which can be measured in terms of centimeter or meter, increase in weight, which can be measured in terms of gram or kilogram, increase in BMI, which can be classified as from 18.5 less than if you have the BMI, you are malnourished from 18.5 to 35, you are normal and if you are having BMI more than 18, 35, you are obese. And development changes in quantity along with the quantitative aspect. Both the things, qualitative as well as quantitative aspects are taking place in the development. 
growth does not continue throughout life it ceases at a particular age generally in human being it ceases from 21 to 23 years of age after that you won't find any increase in height weight or increase in bmi you can find accumulation of fat but in height weight or bmi will be more or less similar development continues throughout life as i have already told you from womb to tomb development is taking place and development may be because of heredity or because of environment there are ample of studies which supports that 50% of personality is being determined by the heredity and the rest 50% is being determined by the environment it may hover one or two percent but studies scientific studies suggest being that development is being contributed by heredity and environment both and that's why development is from womb to tomb because even if your genetic whatever genetic makeup is there there it takes proper shapes then also environment contributes to the development of an individuals throughout the life growth stops after maturation after as i have already told you growth ceases at a particular age from 21 to 23 years it varies in different hum, uh, human beings and after that you won't find any change in the body in their height weight whereas development is progressive development continue throughout the life from womb to tomb and it only ends when the human beings end growth occurs due to the multiplication of cells you see cell division because of cell division growth is taking place and dead cells are continuously replenished by the new cells whereas development occurs due to both maturation and interaction with the environment it is a combination of both because of which development is taking place even if the cell division stops no new cells generate then also development is taking place because of the contribution from the environment side growth is cellular because of mitosis growth is taking place and development is organizational very systematic way development is taking place you see from a kid of a neonatal child to an old age person development is taking place throughout the life in a very organized manner systematic manner growth is one of the part of the development process as i have already told you growth comes under the broader umbrella of development whereas development is a wider and comprehensive terms which not only includes growth but also contribution from different part of life growth may be referred to describe the changes in particular aspect of body and behavior of the organs even if some abnormal growth is enlargement is taking place in the body you can say that growth is taking place whereas development describes the changes in an organism as a whole abnormal growth does not leads to or cannot say that development is taking place it is only abnormal growth is taking place we can say whereas the changes produced by growth are subject of measurement they may be quantified and observable in nature you might have seen small kids around your houses and if you see the same kid after 10 days 15 days or one month two months you can find remarkable difference in their height weight or in their appearances you can even quantify them and you can also observe the things from your naked eye that these differences is taking place development brings qualitative changes which are difficult to measure directly you can observe from your self that the individual is having certain abnormal behavior or not 
and then there are also inventories from which you can measure that the individual is having abnormal behavior. Let me give you some example. There are inventories like General Health Questionnaire, GHQ, which measures the well-being of the individual. At the same time, to measure anxiety, STI 1 and STI 2 inventory is there, which measures the state and trait of the individual. At the same time, there are back depression inventories, which measures the depression of the individuals. And at the same time, there are different batteries, which causes the intelligence of the individual. Now, growth may or may not bring development. Growth can be, as I have already told you, it, it, it can be normal or it can be abnormal also. Physical enlargement of any part or the whole body, that called growth. So, it may or may not bring development. But at the same time, development is possible without growth also. You cannot observe from your naked eye, but at the same time, there are different other things which contributes to the development experiences of the individuals. Those experiences can be either positive or negative. So, with this, we have come to end of today's lecture. We, we will meet with some new topic next time. Thank you so much.